we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, representing our parish family and lighting the Advent candles is Chuck and Janet Larry. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace and peace of God the Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen. Let us please pause for a moment and speak to God from our heart, asking for his mercy and forgiveness from our sins. Lord God, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, you were sent to save all sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, you plead for us at the right hand of your Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exalt. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble, make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. The words of the response are, Lord, come and save us. Lord, come. 
sight to all the blind. Raise up those bent low. Your heart is dear to the broken ones. You welcome in the stranger. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient, make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates, Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come, 
or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. So first of all, let's clear up one thing. It's rose, not pink. (laughs) We only wear these vestments twice a year on the fourth Sunday of Lent, late Tare Sunday, when we approach the celebration of the risen Christ at Easter. And on this, the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday. Both those words, late Tare and Gaudete, mean rejoice. And on this weekend, we're reminded to rejoice because Advent will soon be over. We will soon celebrate the birth of our Savior. So with only about 10 days left before Christmas, today we're called to continue to prepare with great expectation for the coming of the Christ child. We hear in today's gospel of a man who had his own expectation about the Messiah. This is the second weekend in a row we hear about John the Baptist. Last week's gospel described him as a fearless herald of the Messiah. He was an outspoken, brave man who drew large crowds in the wilderness and was confidently criticizing the religious hypocrisy of the time. This week's gospel describes him differently. Now he's talking from the confine of a prison cell. This man who was a cousin of Jesus, the man who baptized Jesus, sounds discouraged, confused, and perhaps a little bit depressed. No prison is a pleasant place, but this one was likely dark, dirty, and foul in many ways. And now in that sad place, sat John. John had thought he was doing everything right and preparing the way for the Lord. And in that process, as can be dangerous any time in the world, John mixed politics and religion. He chastised King Herod for taking up with his half-niece, Herodias, and now he was paying the price. Sitting in prison, John has time to think. He recalls the hopes that the Messiah he expected would throw off Herod, Caesar, and anyone else. John prepared well, but his expectations were off somewhat. Jesus wasn't the Messiah he expected, and so he asked the question, is he really the one we have prepared for? Or should we look for another? Reminds me of a story in the Reader's Digest about a woman who was looking for the perfect birthday card for her husband. She picked one up to look promising. On the outside it read, Sweetheart, you are the answer to my prayers. Then she turned to the inside which read, You're not exactly what I prayed for, but apparently you're the answer. (laughs) The reality was somewhat different from her expectation. There was an interesting occurrence involving lack of expectation in the Washington Metro Metro, a number of years ago that involved the world-renowned violinist, Joshua Bell. All of a sudden, there he was in the train station performing in ordinary clothing for about 20 minutes, playing the same pieces he had played three nights before at the Symphony Hall in Boston. However, most of the thousand commuters basically ignored him 
and considered him just another street hustler. They didn't recognize genius when they saw it. They weren't prepared and didn't have any expectations of encountering such a person. Back when I was teaching cost accounting and trying to get my students to prepare for the final exam, I would bring this to class. I think it's timely with the Sacred Heart High School having exams this coming week. It's called the Dr. D Exam Week Lockbox. And it has in it a place for your cell phone, your driver's license, your car keys, and your TV remote. The first item, the TV remote, is there so they wouldn't be distracted from their studies by too much TV time. Second, their cell phone, so they wouldn't waste time talking and texting that week. Then there's the car key, so they wouldn't be inclined to drive all around Isabella County, but have more time for the library. And fourth is their photo ID, so they wouldn't be tempted to hit those, let us say, entertainment spots in town. I assured them if they put those items in a lockbox, I'd return them to them in a week, and they'd have more time in their schedule to prepare for the final, and therefore they could expect to do better. Well, the record will show that no one ever took me up on that. So we ask ourselves today, what are the things that we busy ourselves with during Advent that distort or lower our expectations of the true meaning of Christmas? and keep us from preparing properly for the coming of our Lord. We all know the time before Christmas can be a time of high anxiety as our minds ponder whether everything will come together just the way we anticipate for Christmas. We ask ourselves if all of our gifts to others will be appropriate, if they'll be appreciated and adequate. We often wonder if we've forgotten someone's Christmas gift or whether the Christmas gift opening and holiday meals will be all that we hope for. If we can push these worries, cares, and anxieties out of our mind, there'll be more room for the Christ child in our hearts. There'll be more time for conversation with our blessed Lord at this special time of the year. In one of Emily Dickinson's poems, she writes about a conversation with a lover and says, and I'm paraphrasing, it's one thing for you to love me, but it's another thing for you to tell me you love me. Isn't that true in all relationships? When a granddaughter says to her grandfather, I love you, the response will certainly be, I love you too. Likewise, when a son says to his mother, a spouse says that to a spouse or a friend to a friend, those precious words, I love you, we know for sure that the response will be, I love you too. But those type of conversations don't take place normally while we're watching TV or texting. And so it is with our blessed Lord. So let us try in the remaining time we have before Christmas to put aside those distractions as best we can and spend time quietly and properly preparing for the coming of our Lord at Christmas. If we do, our expectations of him will be less distorted, more clear. In a special way, when we celebrate his coming at Christmas, we will tell the Lord, I love you, Lord. And we can expect in our heart to hear those same words from the Christ child, I love you too. May God richly bless you as we approach the Christmas season. Please rise. Let us now make our profession of faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Father in heaven, we now bring our prayers and petitions before you. We ask that you continue to open our minds and our hearts, that we will receive your word. For the whole church, as we prepare for the coming of the Lord, that we may be watchful in prayer and diligent in good works. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our public officials, that they will uphold true justice and form a society that is filled with joy and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ, that they may take as an example of hardship and patience the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who find the holiday season a burden and trial, especially those who mourn the loss of a loved one, bear the loneliness of prison, or suffer from depression. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all women, especially those preparing to bring a child into the world, may they give thanks to God for the gift of their child. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite you to please pause for a moment now and ask the Lord for the personal prayers found in the silence of your heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In conclusion, let us pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel, which is found on the inside cover of your song. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our presentation hymn is number 401, O Come Divine Messiah, 401.
please pray that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For Jesus assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end, we acclaim. <laughs> gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death we, you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all of the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis I, our Pope, Robert Bruce, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you very much.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Our communion hymn is number 397. Maranatha, Lord Messiah, 397. invite the person who is taking communion home to the shut in her homebound to please come forward. My dear sister, you are sent forth from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the person who is not able to join us today at the Eucharist. Please go to them with our prayers, our support, and our love. In the name of our Lord, our Healer, and our Savior, we ask this prayer through Christ, our Lord. Amen. And thank you very much for your ministry to our parish family. At this Mass, we would like to invite the children who have been over in our administration building preparing for the Advent season these are the children that are ages three through six years of age. We'd like to invite them to come forward and receive a blessing.
The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Knights of Columbus free throw contest is next Sunday at the Sacred Heart Gym from 1.30 to 2.30 in the afternoon. This is for boys and girls ages 9 through 14. If you would like to still register, please see Jose Rios in the vestibule area. Shigela raffle tickets are now starting to be sold in the vestibule. The top prize for the Shigela winner is $10,000. Shigela is the biggest fundraiser for our school. The tickets are $100 apiece. The Citizens Climate Lobby Group is having a meeting on Thursday, December 19, from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the Commission on Aging. The guest speaker is Carolyn Wu, who will speak about climate change. Please sign up in the sacristy for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day Masses for lectors, communion ministers, ushers, and altar servers. And finally, cookies and refreshments are being given in the vestibule following the Mass. The Lord be with you. With May Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our closing hymn is number 761, God Has Chosen Me, 761. <laughs> 